Hi, welcome to Django's Garage, Broken Dreams. This is the 2020 roundup video. I thought I'd do one just to say, basically talk about the cars I've bought and sold through 2020 and the progress of the other cars that are in for repairs or I'm trying to fix as they are Broken Dreams. So, coming through the list of cars I've sold and bought, I had two Triumph TR7s. One were a 16 valve sprint engine and one were a TR7 V8, 4.6 litre V8. So I sold the Sprint engine TR7 right at the beginning of 2019, maybe the very end of 2018. It's not been on the channel, but it was sold. It had a bit of a broken engine. It blew up on a track day. I sold that for 4,500, which is exactly what I paid for the car. So it didn't cost me anything, didn't lose anything. I actually ran it for a few track days. Also, I sold the TR7 Tony Pond replica track car, which I think some of you will have seen on the channel. It caught fire on one of the videos. It's, it's had numerous problems, but it's been a really good fun car, really fast. Had it for about seven or eight years, um, paid about 8,000 for it. And I sold it for, with all the parts and everything, for about 16,000. I did have a 996 Turbo. 2002 in black with black leather manual. I was going to put it on the channel, but I needed to sell a car to pay for another car, and it sold really quickly, so it never got on the channel. In the five years I had the car, it never needed anything doing until I decided to sell it. It needed a starter motor, a full service, a couple of tyres, had the wheels refurbed, and a bit of a valet, and I sold it. I paid 35500 for it and I did get an offer of 50000 after the first year of ownership which I should have sold it but five years on, 8,000 miles and I sold it for 32500 It's a really nice guy. I did have a Ferrari 456 which you've seen on the channel. This is a model of a 456 so we can't show but at least I've got a model of a Ferrari 456. It was silver with black leather. You've seen a review. I bought it from auction, sight unseen. I spent it in that year of ownership, about one and a half thousand on a set of four tyres, a few little repairs, and I ran it for about 3,000 miles. And I sold it and made about a 500 pound profit on that one. So I paid about 35,000 for it, sold it for just over 37,000. I loved that car, it was brilliant. I would buy another four, five, six, if I was to buy another 456, probably a dark green or a dark blue with a tiny interior would be really nice. Another car I sold was a Venturi Atlantic by Turbo. One of only two cars in the UK, I believe. Bought it for about 32,000. I sold it for 36,000 to a guy in Athens. Extremely beautiful car, but I literally drove it for about 200 miles and I decided it was too quiet, a little bit boring. I already had a Venturi Atlantic 300 single turbo, which I felt had a little bit more fun to drive with the way the turbo came in compared to the bi turbo. So I sold that and that raised some more money. It's all building up to basically buy a car what I've always wanted. So that's all the cars that I sold. Ooh, I've sold a body shell as well. I forgot to mention that. I did sell an old Triumph body shell and an engine. So let's see, how many cars did we sell? Two TR7s, an NS6. Um, basically went through six cars, sold six cars off in 2019, 2020. And we got quite a bit of money raised in the bank. And that all went on basically buying a Lamborghini Diablo SV, which I've always wanted. Um, there will be videos coming up of that because it's in bits and I'm trying to fix loads of little issues with it. And there'll be loads of be driving around in track days, etc. in it. So that will be coming to the channel very soon. I did sell some car parts off through uh, 2020 as well. I'll probably raise about another 10,000 selling some old parts and spares I had for these other cars that I sold. It's always good to sort of go through your garage once you sell a car and see if you can find bits that you don't need anymore and sell them off. So the Lamborghini Diablo, right, so this is a car I bought, paid 162000 for it, it was up for around about 180000 
So we'll get it down a little bit. Working well. It only needed four new tyres. That was the most urgent thing. They were, they've sort of been on the car since 2005. Weren't really any wear in them, they just cracked. Putting the four new tyres on was interesting. I had to, I got the two rear ones for the UK, which we get on trade. I weren't too bad the front tyres. I decided the 17 inch wheels, I wasn't happy with them. I wanted the 18 inch SV wheels. So I ordered them from a factory. Well, about 1500 quid for the fruit, for two front wheels. But the tyres could not get any in Europe anywhere. So I had to get the two front tyres from America. I only found one set in America from a tyre rack. So we imported them tyres, so probably about a thousand pound on tyres altogether. With the new wheels, and I did buy a rear brand new wheel and some other bits and bobs for the car, so I spent about three thousand on wheels from the factory. I also bought some other spares, little bits and bobs for the future, air filters, auxiliary belts, a seat belt buckle for the driver's side cracked, a few bulbs. Uh, Spent about 3000 on like bits and bobs basically as you do on a Lamborghini. And then I spent about another 500 on a brand new alarm system, central locking, etc, etc. To make sure the car was safe. The old alarm system didn't work at all. And I had a new key uh, fob made because the old one, well the key itself um, was broken. So we got that sorted out. The car's been brilliant, really love it. A car, what? Or in the collection you've seen on the channel is a Range Rover Classic 1994 Soft Dash. It's a 3.9 V8, and I've done about 600 miles in it this year. It's not a lot. It's mainly used for towing or sort of bad weather if it snows. The money I've spent on it this year was about 100 pound actually to do with that time. It's got an MOT tax. Um, it hasn't needed servicing yet. It's not due. It should be probably the next year it'll be due for all the fluids doing. The only thing I had to do was I took it to Lincoln, which was about, you know, maybe 100 mile round trip. One of the mud flaps just slowly perished and fell off the vehicle, so I put two new front mud flaps on and a few other little bits. So about £100 in costs. The Audi Rally Car Project, short wheelbase, Group B replica, what I'm building. Done nothing with it. So that's just sat in the trailer, it's not going anywhere. The plan is to probably sell that project later this year and raise some more money towards either the Lamborghini or maybe another car for the collection. I've got a car trailer, thought I'd include it. It's cost me nothing over a year, it's hardly done anything, so that's cost nothing. The Lotus Carlton, um, I've only done about 600 miles in that. Not spent a penny on it, apart from fuel and tax and insurance. So that's not been anywhere. It runs fine. It had been undercover for a year prior to that. So it normally comes out for an MOT. The few years before then, it has done quite some big mileage, going to Europe, doing track days, hill climbs, etc. So I'm hoping 2021, it will get used a lot more. It wants a full paint. It wants the interior tidying up, the leather. Mechanical, it's always been sort of perfect after the first two years of ownership. I've spent a lot of time fixing all the faults on them. Um, so hopefully 2021 we're doing some road trips in it. The Mercedes SL60 AMG. Um, I've had that now for about two or three years. It's been sort of winter and summer daily knock around car. It's, I call it the perfect sports tourer. It's got the glass hard top. It's got lovely folding hydraulic soft top. It's a six litre V8. It's, it's just brilliant for just knocking around in. It's automatic, brilliant traction control so you can floor it in the wet, winter, cold weather. It will just accelerate. Things I've had to do over the last year is I've had to rebuild the gearbox. It wouldn't shift gears at all. It just packed in one night while I was out in it. It turned out uh, after stripping the gearbox it was due for a servicing anyway, so new oil, new filters. I decided to change the electronic electro plate inside the gearbox, which sits in the oil. Uh, the seals to protect the wiring loom, because it's a common fault. The oil from the gearbox seeps into the wiring loom. Some new electric plugs, all new solenoids. It cost about £1,000 to do them repairs, and it still didn't fix the fault. Gutted. 
I've got a friend out, oh no, he plugged into the car, and it says it's not communicating from the gearbox to the gearbox ECU. So I tracked down the gearbox ECU, buried in the passenger footwell, a lot higher than the gearbox, but it was full of gearbox oil. It had seeped into the wiring along the common fault, so I take the ECU off, wash it out with brake cleaner, leave it to dry, plug it back in, cars run fine. Best it's actually ever changed gear. I've done about 2,500 miles in it, and I bought some other bits and bobs. It's cost about £2,000 over the year to run that car in parts. I've got a set of the original wheels, the MG split rims, to go back on the car that have been refurbed. Hopefully this year, once I get the Diablo off the ramp, in 2021 we will be doing new wishbones on the SL. Brake overhaul, because it's due for new discs and pads. Get the calipers cleaned up. Probably a new water pump, new viscous coupling, and maybe a few little bits and bobs. Probably another... £2,000 to spend on it for another year's motoring. I'm willing to pay that because it's such a great car to drive. What's, what next the car on the list? BMW GS 1156 Adventure Motorbike. I've done nothing with it for the last three years, so no costs, no running costs. It's just sat in the garage. I need to do a wheel bearing. I need to put a new battery on the bike. Hopefully, 2021, we'll get that done. I'm going to get back out on the motorbike. BMW 850 CSI I've got. It's not been on the channel yet. Um, I've had the car quite some time. I've only done probably about two or 300 miles in the car. Then I stripped it to bare shell, basically. It's had a full bare metal repaint. It just needs the engine and gearbox putting back in and re-trimming. Now it's all been painted. The downside is... is I've just lost interest in it. Um, so I haven't done anything in the last two years on that car. It just needs putting back together. Just not got the time or the interest at the moment. It's too many other projects. So I'm willing to sell that car. I can't have advertising. And, you know, I'm getting offers, decent offers for it. So at some point that car will probably get sold before I finish rebuilding it. I've got a BMW 850i I bought from the auction when I bought the Ferrari. I bought it as a parts car, but we ran it for a year. It does need some work doing, so we'll probably get it MOT'd and running again. And when the 850 CSI sells, we'll probably sell that car as well. Uh, but we didn't spend anything on that car at all last year, so no costs. If you look on my old videos, some of my original videos, where I'm not actually on the video, but the cars are, is there a Renault Alpine A610 Turbo. Lovely car, still got it. There's a nice model of a car. I don't know if you can see that, basically an exact replica, really like that car, one of the dream cars I've always wanted. So what did I spend last year on that car? Well it's in bits at the moment, being restored down at John Ashley uh, Limited, they're an Alpine specialist in Venturi, so it's going through a major restoration, so we've done all the rot in the car, it's having a full paint, Going for all the interior, we're upgrading the engine from a single turbo to a twin turbo, all forged internals. Hopefully, maybe 2021, it'll be back on the road and we'll get it back on the channel. We'll be doing some track days and tours in that car. And cost wise, I think last year we spent maybe about 10,000 on it in buying bits of the engine and other work and labour being done on the car. So we're slowly going through that car. I've still got the Venturi 300 Atlantic Turbo, single turbo model. The plan is to sell that car. We'll be doing a video on it very soon, hopefully, a review. And I know a lot of people keep asking me to talk more about the Venturi. I could say it's definitely very similar to a Ferrari 355. Might not sound as good, might not look as good, obviously, beauty than the eye beholder. But it's a very good handling car, the steering's perfect, the suspension's perfect, the brakes are perfect, it's lovely, it's very practical, it's more practical than a Ferrari, it's half the price of a 355, so I would say if anyone's thinking of getting a 355 but they can't afford one, get a Venture Atlantic Turbo, I will be selling the car soon, so we'll get the videos done, we'll sell it, or maybe part exit against something else, what will be more interesting. I think to the channel. 
Um, cost for it, uh, well, we've done probably about three or 400 miles in it last year. The year before, we did about 2,000 miles around Europe. But last year, due to lockdowns and things, it didn't get used much. We did a little bit of driving in it. And cost-wise, no parts needed, just a service. So, I did some calculations. Total sales of cars, we were raised £136,000. Some cars I made profits on. Uh, I believe the only car I lost money on was the 996 Turbo. All the other cars actually either broke even or actually made a profit on. And total costs of repairs and running costs sort of came in around about 20,000 I worked out. You've got about 3,000 for insurance and you've got about 750 pound in road tax. So total cost of 23,750 sort of in that ballpark figure. The only thing I haven't included in that is the Lamborghini Diablo what I bought for 162k. That was mainly paid for by selling all the other cars off. I uh, had to borrow a bit of money to get the rest of the car. Um, so, you know, it's like I'm down by about 50,000 quid. Which, when I sell the Audi project and the Venturi, that'll more than pay for that. And so the Diablo is basically being swapped for some other broken dreams, let's say. So looking forward to 2021, which we've just actually come into now. Well, plan on selling, obviously, the Audi, the Venturi, both the BMWs. Keep the motorbike, obviously. All the other cars, mainly the Mercedes, the Diablo, get them fixed up. Lotus Colton. Just keep maintaining that. The Range Rover just needs a bit of maintenance. Which should I leave me with? Well, yeah, so we'll be left with Lotus Carlton, SL60, the Renault Alpine, Range Rover Classic, Motorbike and Diablo. I am thinking of buying another car if the other two cars sell. Um, I've, you know, leave some comments, see what you'd like to see on the channel car-wise. It has to be sort of 80s or 90s, sort of cool retro classic car. Maybe another Ferrari, 550, 355, something like that. Even a Testarossa would be cool. Jobs obviously planned is mainly the SL and Diablo. And cars I really would like to get hold of. A Venturi 400 GT. I keep talking to a gentleman who owns one. Um, says I've got the first choice on it when it comes up for sale but it could be another year or two before he decides to sell it still looking for a 456 still looking for a 512 TR a Testarossa maybe even a 355 keep looking at old 911s 993s 964s but you know the prices are quite high if I can find a really cool retro looking car um, we might get one on the channel so Please subscribe, click the notification bell, click like on any videos you like, leave some comments, see what you're looking for in more car content. Obviously, I've only got so many broken dreams. If you've got a broken dream too, leave a comment about it and what issues you're having, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.